All right, time for the Fantasy Football Fix with Jeff Esquino. It's brought to you by the Piccadilly Inn on Route 206 in Chemung, home of South Jersey's best wings. Jeff Pasquino, fantasy expert, footballguys.com. He joins us every week at this time. If you have questions for Jeff Pasquino, get him in now, 609-403-0973, 609-403-0973 on the playsugarhouse.com text board. We'll try to fit in as many as we can today. Many of you got your questions in early, but we'll have room for some more. Broads has got his eye on the text board. He will start compiling your questions for Jeff Pasquino. But first, let's start with tonight's game. We got Bengals and Browns. It sounds like kind of a stinker with the two Ohio teams, but there's a lot of fantasy interest in this one, Jeff. Yeah, I mean, it's still the Browns. So there's a little bit of like, oh, okay. But Joe Burrows is there. So Joe Burrows is a borderline quarterback one, and he brings that running element to the the game. So that elevates his floor much like you get with Lamar Jackson and Patrick Mahomes. So he's viable there as a starter. Uh, Running backs are more of a running back twos. You have Joe Mixon, you have Nick Chubb, and Kareem Hunt. Wide receivers, you have some wide receiver twos and threes. A.J. Green, Odell Beckham Jr., Landry, and if you need to, Boyd could probably be a flex. All right, uh, that's tonight. Get your players in the lineup for the Thursday night football game. Let's get to some quarterbacks here. Let's get Jeff's opinion on Josh Allen. He went for over 300. Josh Allen, is he a QB1 now? He's a QB1 pretty much in every start now. Again, he's got the running element to his game as well. He's a top five quarterback on our board this week. All right, top five quarterback, Josh Allen. What about Aaron Rodgers? I know his name is big, but he wasn't great last year, but he was great on Sunday. He was, and I think he might be moving things along. They're, the running game is not in sync yet, and they had to rely on his arm, and the defense isn't in sync yet either. So Detroit put up some points last week. They should have won that game if Swift could actually catch a ball. Uh, and, but I think that you're looking at Aaron Rodgers as a top-10 quarterback because we can get home against Detroit in their home opener. Okay, Cam Newton only threw the ball 15 times. He did have a monster scoring day if you get bonus points for rushing touchdowns like I do. But can you trust Cam Newton week to week? For the most part, he's 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 working his way into that system. It suits his game. His game suits it. He is a multi-dimensional, but as a thrower and a, and a rusher, again, that running element is really going to boost his value. Another top ten quarterback this week. All right, uh, one other guy we want to take a look at on the quarterback side. What about Gardner Minshew? Had a big week one, but is he trustworthy as a week two starter? He's more of a quarterback too. He gets a lot of points in the second half of games because Jacksonville tends to be down their running game is not established Minshew has some n- nice value as uh, a, an up-and-comer but he's more of a quarterback too or a super flex kind of player all right don't forget hang around for the end Jeff will give you some sleepers some waiver wire guys let's go to the running backs now get your thoughts on some of these guys and all right Derek Henry what did you see from week one are you a little uh wor- I don't want to say worried but uh, is Derek Henry going to be that big time uh, RB1 that we thought well, keep in mind he was facing a pretty good defense in Denver. Uh, they, they they can they can hem them in. They focused. They wanted to push that front and make them throw the ball. So Henry still got his. He's a very hard runner, and it was the first game for a lot of teams that who did not get a lot of work in the preseason. So it was kind of like the first half was kind of like their preseason. So I think he's going to be fine. This is a get right game against Jacksonville. He's still a top five running back. All right, Josh Jacobs had a monster week one. Is this the Josh G- Jacobs we might see in week number two against New Orleans? I think so. And I said th- Josh Jacobs was like my second tier top guy after the t- the big four this year. Uh, Josh get Jacobs, he's, he owns that backfield. There's nobody really behind him. He's going to get plenty of targets out of the backfield for PPR leagues. He's virtually going to be comparable to Alvin Kamara in value this year. Uh, Jonathan Taylor looks like he might be the guy in Indianapolis now, although Himes had a big game last week. But with Mac out, what's the running back situation in Indianapolis? It's a split backfield. Taylor's going to get the early downs. Himes is going to get the passing down work. Uh, Taylor, though, is more of a running back one, even though it's a tough matchup against Minnesota. And Naheem Hines is a running back two this week. Uh, Last week, Miles Sanders did not play. He was a high pick for many people. What are you telling Sanders owners? He's a running back, too, this week. They really need him. He needs to be in that lineup, and he will be in that lineup this week. It's not a great matchup against the Rams, but Sanders will be in the backfield nearly every snap. All right, last running back, Malcolm Brown. They ran the ball 40 times last week. Is Malcolm Brown uh, an RB, too? 
he is, and he's your workhorse this week. And I think he's going to be the, the guy that they have to stop. Although I still like Cam Akers long term, Malcolm Brown kind of owns the backfield right now until Akers starts to develop. All right. If you have a question for Jeff Pasquino, 609 403 0973. Hunter is compiling the questions for Jeff. We'll get to those in just a second. Let's go over to the week two wide receivers and get some opinions from Jeff Pasquino. Adam Thielen, I don't know that he had the same hype on draft day, but he had a big week one. Well, I liked him because he, he's a top. He's a he's a wide receiver one. He's a top ten guy, and the reason is is that he's the number one target in that offense now that Diggs is in Buffalo. So he's going to get a thousand plus yards this year. Beat the bulk of the work, but Minnesota still works the run game first. Uh, Allen Robinson's name came up because he wanted to be traded, but should he be in your lineup? He is, and the squeaky the squeaky wheel is going to get the grease this week against the Giants. He's going to be a, a, a wide receiver one. The problem in Chicago, of course, is the quarterback situation. So the offense is not clicking. Allen Robinson is more of a downfield threat, but he need quarterback needs time to get the ball there and needs some accuracy too. Everybody talking about Darius Slayton's night. So what has he done for himself in the fantasy world? I liked him as the top guy for the Giants as a receiver. He's a deep threat. He's he's running routes very effectively now. He is he's borderline the number one guy. I was well watched how much he was on the field. He was on the field a lot as single wide receiver sets. I think he's a wide receiver three with upside for big plays. All right. Uh, one more before we get to the questions. If you have a question you want to try to slip in. 609-403-0973. Michael Thomas, huge name on the fantasy scene, is out. So who is the beneficiary of that in New, or- uh, New Orleans? My top guy to mention, wide receiver, who might be on a lot of waiver wires if it's a shallower league, is Emmanuel Sanders. Right. That's the guy they've been looking for a lot this uh-huh. year, and he's the wide receiver, too, going to be a one this week. All right, uh, there you go. Now, uh, if you have a question for Jeff, 609-403-0973. Hunter has all your questions. He's been compiling them. Let's get to listener questions. To know, Odell Beckham tonight or Marquise Brown versus Houston? I like Marquise Brown more. Odell Beckham is not proven effective yet, and I don't trust that offense just yet. Jared Cook or Tyler Hawkinson? I like Hawkinson this week. Uh, it's a tough call, and a lot of people like Cook this week. I think you can't go wrong with either one, but I think Hawkinson has a touchdown, and I think Green Bay might have some trouble with him this week. Edelman or Dobbins? Uh, I guess Dobbins, you're talking about a flex here. I would go with Edelman because he's going to be the wide receiver one in that offense. Dobbins, Baltimore is still playing musical running backs. Cole from Manahawkin wants to know, is Joshua Kelly set for a role similar to what Melvin Gordon had? Will he continue with the goal line carries, or do you see Eckler taking over those carries as the season progresses? Kelly is the bigger back. I think he's going to get more work as the season wears on. I like his upside longer term. I would definitely stash him for now. Okay, uh, Joey D needs two wide receivers out of these. Jarvis Landry, Darius Slayton, Robbie Anderson, or Mike Williams? Uh, I would go with Slayton and Landry. All right, there you go. That's all the time we have for your questions this week. We'll do it again next week with Jeff Pasquino from thefootballguys.com. But before Jeff goes today, Jeff, who are some waiver wires, some under-the-radar guys? Who should be in lineups this week, week two? couple wide receivers because before I know we're going to love the running back. So wide receiver Scott Miller in Tampa Bay is a nice pickup, as is Traquan Swift for the Saints because both teams are banged up a wide receiver. Running backs, I think this is the week, this is the get-right game for Tampa Bay. They're going to want to establish the run. Deshaun Vaughn, a rookie, may be active and maybe you could pick up. And also in deep leagues, Bryce Love could be active for Washington as well. Don't sleep on him. Another guy that's very deep. Miles Gaskin for Miami. Everybody was looking at Breda. Everybody was look, looking at Jordan Howard. Uh, but it was Gaskin who had the most routes and most carries last week for Miami. Um, also, Benny Snell was a solid. Adrian Peterson. And I think uh, James Robinson for Jacksonville until they get uh, the rest of the running backs healthy. All right. Week two starts tonight. Get your players in the lineup from Cincinnati and Cleveland. And don't forget Jeff Pasquino from the footballguys.com every Thursday right here with your fantasy fix on the Sports Bash on 97.3 ESPN. Jeff, good luck. Good luck, everybody, and enjoy the game.